So have you ever had, or maybe you currently have an outdoor hose bib that's leaking? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show you a couple of very easy fixes. The first one is more of a temporary fix just to buy some time. And then the second one is going to be more of a permanent fix. So let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so as you can see here, we've got a leaking hose bib or faucet. And the main reason why these leak is because on the inside of this housing here, there are different parts, but one of the main components is a washer. And that washer, when it gets compressed down, when you tighten down this handle, it gets compressed, which then seals up the gap to where water can no longer flow through it. Well, over time, they wear down, they can crack. In a lot of cases, they just get compressed too much to where they turn into basically like a pancake. So it just allows a little bit of water to go through. So a fix that will work a lot of the time, but it's more of a temporary fix to where you're just kind of buying some time before you need to do a more permanent fix or a hose bib replacement. Well, if you look really closely, you'll see right here where it looks like the shape of a nut. That is where we can put an adjustable wrench on. And hopefully you can see there's a little crack that goes in between the front of this faucet here and there's a little crack right here just barely behind the front of it. And this is the opening for the housing. Now different faucets may have different locations as to where their housing is or how they're taken apart, but pretty much every faucet will have a removable cap to where you can get into the housing of the faucet. And usually a dead giveaway is looking for somewhere that looks like a nut to where you can put an adjustable wrench on it. So the easy fix for this is just to try and compress that washer that's inside even more. And by compressing it, hopefully we can stop the water from leaking. So I'll just take an adjustable wrench, put it on the hose bib where it looks like a nut, and we're just gonna turn it to the right or clockwise and try and tighten it down. But if you wanna make sure that you're gonna be completely safe, you wanna take a pipe wrench, put it on the faucet itself, and then take your adjustable wrench and then tighten it down, pulling against each other, just kind of stabilizing everything to make sure that you don't do any damage in behind the wall or to your piping in general. All right, so as you can see, just by tightening down this cap that's on top of the housing, compressing the rubber washer that's inside of here that's stopping the water, we were able to stop this from being able to leak. Now, if tightening it down did not stop the dripping, then your hose bib is definitely completely shot and you're either gonna have to replace it or you're gonna have to go on to the next fix, which eventually everybody's gonna have to do anyways. Now, for the more permanent fix and what we're eventually gonna have to do regardless, we're gonna need to shut off the water to our house. So if you have a main shut off somewhere on your house, if you're on city water, a lot of times it's out at the front, maybe it's out in the yard and you'll need a special tool to shut that off. Sometimes they install a valve in between the city shut off and your house. But in my case, I'm on a well, so I just need to turn off the circuit breaker that supplies power to my well. And then regardless of whether you're on city water or on a well, once that water is shut off, now you need to open up the hose bib and drain all of the water out of the lines so that you're not dealing with any pressure when you go to take this apart. All right, so again, the steps are gonna be the same for pretty much any hose bib you come across. The location of what you need to take off just might be a little bit different. But for the majority of them, and what I'm gonna do on this one is I'm gonna take my pipe wrench, just going to put it on the faucet itself in behind the cap for the housing. I'm going to take my adjustable wrench. I'm going to put it on that area that looks like a nut again, except for this time we're going to spin it counterclockwise, which is going to remove the cap and allow us access to the housing inside. I'm going to use my two wrenches, start turning counterclockwise, came loose fairly easily. And then once it's loose, it doesn't take a whole lot of torque to then spin it out. And so as you can see, the cap just screws off like so. And once we pull it out, we've exposed that washer that's then responsible for making sure that the water stops flowing through. Now for folks that have a freeze proof faucet, you're gonna notice that when you take this cap off, when you pull it out, you're gonna have a lot longer shaft on it. And that's what makes it freeze proof. That shaft is extending all the way into the house, into the piping that's running in your walls, which is kept warmer, of course. And at the end of that shaft is gonna be just like this one where you're gonna have a washer. But as far as all the instructions go, they're gonna be the exact same. All right, so as you can see, here's our valve. And here at the top, you can see that washer. If we flip it over here to the top, you can see that we've got a Phillips head screw here. And then you can see here on the rubber washer, you can see that little line going all the way around, that little imprint. That is just normal wear and tear of this being tightened down constantly over the years. And this is actually not too bad. They can be a lot worse than this where they're completely pancaked out. Or you may observe some actual cracking or some cuts in the washer and that's just from the rubber degrading over time. Either way, this is a super easy fix. 
In order to replace this, we just need to get a Phillips headed screwdriver or on a lot of them, they may not have a Phillips head. They may just have a flat head or a slotted screwdriver slot. But either way, a flat head screwdriver will work no matter what. So we'll just take our screwdriver and turn it to the left or counterclockwise. Or if you're like me, you can cheat and use an electric screwdriver. Then once that screw is loose and we can just take it out by hand and the washer is going to want to come with it. Then once that washer is removed off of the valve, you're going to want to get a kit with flat washers in it. Now this is an assortment kit made by Danco. And of course I'll have links for this and everything else down in the description down below, including that electric screwdriver that everybody asked me about. But I found in this assortment kit that the half flat washer is the closest in replicating the size of the original washer in this particular faucet and most faucets. And the one half has a three quarter outside diameter and that's why it's going to fit in most housing perfectly. So I'm just going to take that new washer and I'm going to take the screw that came out of the old washer, put it into and through the new washer. Then I'm going to take that screw and thread it back into the valve shut off and then tighten it down like so. You need to be careful not to over tighten this to where it causes more of a bowl effect. You want this to be nice and flat on top. All right, so while I still have my valve out, this is a good opportunity. Most places in the country are going to have hard water. You're going to have some mineral deposits inside of here. If you have a water softener, obviously that's going to cut down on that, but it's a good opportunity to just kind of take a wire brush and just try to clean up those threads and inside the body of the faucet itself. I typically just spin it around in there until I see that the threads are nice and clean. They're starting to shine again and I've removed those deposits and any buildup that was on the threads themselves. Then I'll just take a towel and just clean it up a little bit more. And so now those threads are really nice and shiny. And I'll do the same with the threads on my valve as well. And as you can see, those threads on the valve are now nice and shiny as well. Now we need to seal the threads and that's where you can use either some pipe dope or some plumber's tape. I personally just like to use plumber's tape. This is a very low pressure application. And with the interior part of the valve stem facing me, I wanna put my tape around on these threads clockwise or to the right. And I typically like to wrap around it about three times or so. And the reason why I wrap this around here clockwise with the interior portion of the valve facing towards me is because by doing it this way, here is the end of my tape. As you can see, if I pull it to the left, it starts coming off. Whereas if I go to the right or clockwise, which is going to be the direction I'm going to be spinning it in there, it actually pulls the tape down with it, making it nice and tight. So if I had it on here backwards, some of this tape may get jumbled up and become loose and I won't have as tight of a seal. So now that my plumber's tape or pipe thread tape is on the threads, I can now insert it back into the faucet itself, tighten it down by hand. Then once I can't tighten it down by hand anymore, I want to make it a little bit tighter. So I'm going to put a pipe wrench on the back portion of the faucet in the opposite direction that I'm going to be pulling. Then I'm going to take my adjustable wrench, put it on that nut on the assembly and turn it clockwise. And I'm just going to tighten it up to where it becomes difficult to spin it anymore, which is right about there. I won't, I can't spin it anymore without putting a lot of torque on it. So it's down nice and tight. So now I can go turn the water back on and test out to see if it leaks anymore. All right, so the water's back on. As you can see, I have no dripping here anymore, and I can just turn the valve on, and I have water come out. When I turn it off, it shuts it off. Of course, I'll have a couple of drips until it drips out of the faucet itself, but we're not having that consistent drip like we did before the repairs. This hose bib or faucet is back up to basically new condition because it's always going to be the seal that's inside that goes bad and is ultimately responsible for whether water flows through this or not. Now, if you thought this video was helpful, you're going to want to click on this link right here, which will take you directly to whatever video YouTube thinks that you're going to want to watch next because it's going to be another information packed video on home repairs and installations. So I hope that you found this video to be helpful. If you did, if you could do me a huge favor, hit that thumbs up button right down below. And of course, if you have any questions or comments still, you can leave those down in the comment section. And I'll catch you all in the next one. See ya.